This week, the U.S. Senate is considering the National Defense Authorization Act. One amendment to the bill would permit methods of interrogation, such as waterboarding, that are widely considered torture. The amendment would supersede the executive order signed by President Obama in January 2009 that prohibits the use of torture by U.S. forces. Critics say it could bring policy back to the Bush era with an expansive and unchecked power that could violate international law. For more on this, we're joined by Jonathan Hafitz. He's professor at Seton Hall Law School and the author of Habeas Corpus After 9-11, Confronting America's New Global Detention System. Welcome to FSRN. Hi, thank you. The amendment is number 1068 and has been introduced by Republican Kelly Ayotte of New Hampshire. What specifically would it authorize? Uh, well, this the amendment would uh, reintroduce uh, many of the most controversial and illegal practices from the Bush administration era um, regarding the interrogation of detainees and would effectively reinstitute the uh, torture regime um, in, in terms of the U.S. national security policy. For one thing, uh, it would um, roll back the uh, President Obama's executive order on ensuring lawful interrogations that sought to ban torture. Um, it would also erode a, a, a previous act that Congress had passed called the Detainee Treatment Act, which uh, had passed by in 2005 and overwhelmingly in the Senate, you know, outlawing torture as well as cruel and uh, inhuman and degrading treatment. And it would require the administration to adopt a, uh, a secret annex to the Army's interrogation uh, manual, which would be a way uh, for this would be a way for for torture techniques to be able to 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 come back into the interrogations. You mention uh, a few effects of this uh, um, amendment and changes. One of those is the rolling back of the executive order signed in January 2009 by President Obama. When he signed it, it was seen as uh, bringing some clarity to U.S. policy on interrogation, and it stated that uh, interrogation techniques are not to be authorized uh, beyond the uh, Army field manual. So what does that manual cover, and what would change here? Well, what the manual covers is it it provides um, guidance and instruction to uh, military officers, officers who are engaged in um, the interrogation of, of individuals who are um, brought into U.S. custody. And the, the, the manual itself is, uh, you know, provides a, a kind of guide for lawful interrogations and for the U.S. to uphold its obligations under Geneva Convention. But the idea of a secret um, annex would allow for, um, you know, essentially secret interrogation tactics that uh, that could be in violation of the Geneva Conventions to be put into place, and uh, it was actually, this option was actually rejected in, by the Bush administration Defense Department in 2006 on the view that the, uh, you know, such a secret annex would inhibit training and ally collaboration. Well, what, what is this secret annex? How would it be created, and how would it be put into practice? Uh, well, it would be uh, it would not be public, and there would be uh, you know there would be some interrogation techniques that would be legal in a, in the sense of permissible by the 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 the, uh, the manual that are given to uh, interrogators, but they would not be you know the public would not know uh, you know what those techniques were, and so it, it's a, it's a way to in effect you know smuggle in or allow for the use of uh, techniques that are not merely you know controversial, but that may be illegal. That amendment, again, is 1068 and being considered by the U.S. Senate. Jonathan Hafitz is a professor at Seton Hall Law School and the author of Guantanamo Lawyers Inside the Prison, Outside the Law. Jonathan Hafitz, thank you for your time. Thank you.